Let's get started. Today we're going to be making um, our fantastic cha-cha chili with cheddar and jalapeno cornbread. And for dessert, we are going to make carrot cake muffins with spiced um, icing, which I haven't tried the icing before, but I took a little taste of it and it's delicious. So we're actually gonna start with our cornbread today. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to preheat the oven to 350 Fahrenheit. And I've also got, just so you know, I've saved some time here. I threw my ground beef, one pound of ground beef into my multi-purpose pot, or if you have a wok, you can use that. And with a tablespoon of oil, and it's just been browning. And so we could save a little bit of time here. Okay, so we're going to set our oven. We're going to put in um, three quarters cup of milk. And I'm using my little uh, prep pro bowls. These are the one cup prep bowl bowls. They're one, um, sorry, they have measurements on the side in milliliters and cups, of course. And they have this cute little silicone lid and they come in a set of four. These are great for prepping ahead. If you're gonna have salads for the week, you can put like cucumbers, um, tomatoes, onions, all that stuff in these. And then what I do for salads is I use my four cup prep bowl and I put the lettuce in there the day before and then the next day I can just dump in whatever ingredients I want from my little prep bowls. You can also do that for omelets and things, having it all prepared ahead of time. We're also going to put in a quarter cup of cubed butter. So let me just find a tool here to get this out. I'm gonna use my three-in-one spatula here. This is great because it's a long spatula and um, it reaches into really tall jars. And you can also spread items with it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is put this in the microwave for one minute just to melt it. So just one minute here, literally. I love that these bowls are glass because they're really sturdy. I actually just dropped one of these little glass bowls into my sink and I thought, great, it's gonna break because it's a ceramic sink. It didn't break, it stayed, they're very sturdy. All right, so next after that, we are going to be whisking in two eggs until they are foamy. So get some of my stuff out of the way here and this should be almost done 30 more seconds while we're waiting here I want to tell you there is a new special for the month of April 2022 if you spend $60 you receive a free meal solution and there's pulled pork coconut Thai soup or um, mud pie which is delicious if you have kids or you like to make that no bake kind of pie for outdoors with chocolate and whipped cream. Perfect summer dessert. Okay, looks like this is just about melted here. So we're gonna pull this out. Perfect. And I'm just gonna use my little mini whisk here from Epicure. It's the perfect size for this, these little bowls. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna add our two eggs. Oop. Come on. And we're going to whisk it until it's foamy. Break them up a little bit first. I probably should have used a bigger bowl. <laughs> I wasn't sure how big it was going to be. So maybe I will. We'll see what it looks like when I dump in the mix. All right. So we're going to add in our mix as well. And we're gonna whisk that until there's no lumps in it. So there, we've got that frothy. I'm gonna use my Prep Pro scissors. These are Epicure's amazing kitchen shears. They're really good for, um, if you wanna have kids helping in the kitchen, they can cut up vegetables, they can cut up pieces of chicken, they can cut up pizza, all kinds of things they can do with that. Or those, I should say. Or just general kitchen shears. Great for um, herbs cutting those as we head into the summer. Comment below if you guys uh, grow your own herbs. I'm actually gonna just use a bigger spoon here for a bit because I have a small bowl, otherwise I would whisk it in. <laughs> so we'll just get it all incorporated and then I will use my whisk. So I can see the jalapenos in there, oh yeah. It doesn't have a really spicy spice. Like once in a while you might get a tiny piece of it that's a little bit you know, a tiny bit of a kick of heat. But if you're looking to cook for kids or people who don't like um, a lot of spice, don't worry, this is going to be uh, simple. So I'm just gonna get this, all the lumps out of it. 
And then we're gonna add in a half a cup of cheddar cheese. Perfect. And I've just got shredded cheddar cheese or marble cheese, whatever you have. And there's a little kitchen hack here that I've recently been starting to do. So I buy the bars of cheese when they go really cheap on sale. I buy a whole bunch of them and then I bought one of those um, larger cheese grinders that have like a handle and it just like grates it so fast. And then I freeze it up in freezer bags. I just put the type of cheese and the date that I put it in. And it is so easy when you pop it out of the freezer, um, cheese that's been grated doesn't stick together usually very much and it's easy to crumble apart if it has stuck together. So it's a super way to save money and to have that because I don't like to buy the shredded cheese at the market because it costs too much money. It's way more expensive. So it takes me literally like two minutes to to grind one of those huge um, cheese bars, if that even, into a bag. All right, so here is our batter. And what we're going to be doing, let me just wash my hands here, is we're going to be using our um, Perfect Petite's pan. I just want to turn my oven back on here because it's kind of loud, so I had to shut it off for a minute. Okay, so here is our Perfect Petite's pan. Now, this is fantastic. It's actually just the silicone mold that I'm talking about. This is our Perfect Petite's, and I've set it onto one of our sheet pans, which are awesome if you've never done a sheet pan. You can do meals in 15, 20 minutes. And also the thing that I have on here is one of our sheet pan liners, this flat one underneath here, and it has a little lip around it, so if you're cooking juice, like chicken with juices or something that's quite juicy, it will hold it all in and it will, um, save you from having to clean and scrub your sheet pan. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're just going to make little mini jalapeno cornbreads. And I was going to do these um, in a round, one of our silicone round pans for like a cake. But then I thought, you know what? This is a good idea for, if you wanna cook once and eat more than once, this is a great idea to freeze ahead some of these little portions. They're also great to pop out for lunches. Once you cook them, you can just put them into a freezer bag and because they pop right out once they're cooked and cooled. Um, and you freeze them, freeze them in a freezer bag and then you can just pop one or two out if you're going to be taking chili um, so for your lunch or your kids want some little snack. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. Got too much stuff on here. Can you see? So I'm just taking my two tablespoon portion scoop here and I'm just putting about two tablespoons in each one of the little compartments. These scoops are fantastic because they're the perfect measurements for some of our different cookware. Later we're going to be using the muffin makers for our uh, carrot cake muffins and those are going to use the quarter cup scoop, which is exactly the size of those muffin makers. So almost done here. I don't think it's gonna make a full 30 of these, but it will be pretty close. And I could have put a little bit less in each one to stretch it a little further to make 30. But anyways, it's great for little um, granola bars and little snacks like banana breads. We have an amazing banana loaf mix. It doesn't have gluten or any kind of preservatives in it. I was actually going to make that today, but I, I shopped online and when I went to pick it up, they gave me green bananas. So that's not going to work, is it? All right, I'll show you what I've got. So I've made about, um, <clears throat> what's that, 25 of these little ones and then we're going to pop them in the oven and they're going to go in for 35 to 40 minutes. So let's get that going. Perfect. All right. Now I'm going to bring over my, let me clean up here, my uh, chili meat here, which is ground beef. Uh, sorry, I made a mess. Let me just quickly clean this stuff up. All right. So what I have is one pound lean green beef, uh, ground beef, not green beef. Um, <laughs> you, can, uh, you can use turkey, chicken, you can use anything that you want. You could just do vegetarian and use um, the beans, lentils, that kind of thing. You can also use that uh, vegetarian ground meat as well. It's like a soy-based meat. So here we have it, my one pound. 
and it's browned in there and it's crumbled. And if you have ground beef, an amazing tool to use is our ground meat separator. Sorry, I got some dough on it here from my batter. This is an awesome tool. So what you can do is just go like this and it loosens them up and breaks it down into smaller pieces. You can also use it for mashed potatoes. You can use it for avocados, bananas, for banana loaves, all that kind of jazz. So we're gonna add in our chili ingredients. Uh, first we're going to, oh, I wanted to show you something first. This pot is called the multi-purpose pot. So I've got it in the 12 cup. There's also an eight cup one. But the thing, this is one of the first things I ever got, like, I don't know, 15 years ago when I started using Epicare, because of these features. So it has a spout on there to pour out. It has the most amazing lid. So you don't need a strainer because it has small holes or large holes to strain it out. So the grease from this, I can just pour out and don't have to worry about using another dish and getting it dirty. The other thing I love is it's got a see-through lid. So if you're cooking rice or whatever, you don't have to take the lid off to see. And it's got this rubber thing, so it's not a hot lid to pull off. The handle stays cool unless you've got a huge flame on a gas stove, like way bigger than the pot, which you shouldn't have. And then inside, <clears throat> it has one cup, two cup, or sorry, two, four, six, eight, ten cups measurements as well. So if you are looking for any kind of cookware, this is amazing. So what we're going to add in is one can of diced tomatoes. So this is the large can. Now I like to add extra beans because I like to make my food stretch further. Sometimes I'll even add an extra pound of beef if I want. So I'm adding in two cans of kidney beans. And what else are we adding in here? Um, you can add corn, you can do lentils um, for extra protein and to bulk it up as well. I believe that's everything that we are putting in there. I thought there was water, let me just check. Yes, half a cup of water as well. And I put the juice from the tomatoes right in there. So, so I'm just gonna mix this up and then we're gonna simmer it on the stove for about 15 minutes. So I'm timing everything out so that we can kind of end at the same time. Our cornbread we could have done in the microwave, but because I wanted to show you that little perfect petite pan, we're gonna take a bit more time and do it in the stove. And then we're, oh, ha, we gotta put our seasoning. Good. So, <laughs> cha cha chili seasoning goes in as well. These are such um, pure um, herbs and spices that you don't need a lot of them. And they, you can actually add extra to them because you can add extra ingredients because it will keep strong flavor in there. If you buy the store-bought mixes, like, I'm not gonna say the names of them, but the sodium on those is insane. And it has a lot of preservatives and junk in it too. So you have to use a lot more of that to be able to um, get the same amount of flavor. So this sodium on this one, just so you can compare, is 60 milligrams. And I know some of the taco, fajita, chili seasonings from the store are like upwards of a thousand or more per packet. Some are up to 2000, which is just crazy. So there, I might add a little bit more water just because I put those extra beans in as well. And one thing that I saw another consultant was saying is you can use um, this for a snack night, like a game night or something. And all you do is you put your chili into a casserole dish, layer it with some um, grated cheese, put it in the oven, melt it, and then you just serve it with taco chips, like uh, nacho chips, tortilla chips. And uh, that's a great snack. You can top those with sour cream. Our guacamole is amazing mix. Um, so fantastic idea there for a different way to use it. I've also seen you can cut a pepper in half, scoop out the seeds, and dump in some chili and then top it with the same ingredients. So I'm gonna pop this back on the stove and we're just gonna let that simmer, like I said, for 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, what are we doing next? The muffins, dessert. We have to have dessert. And I thought carrot cake is good because Easter is coming up and I think rabbits and carrots, you know. So here we go. We are going to um, do, do, whisk two eggs. So I'm just gonna pop two eggs in here. Oops. Obviously I need to learn how to crack eggs better. 
you have a tip for me, please comment in, in below. <laughs> and then we're going to put in, we gotta whisk those. Let me grab a whisk. Okay, then we're going to put in a third cup of oil. Where's my oil? There it is. And again, it's all measured out. So your kids could even make these, you know, if, when they come home from school, they want a snack or a dessert for that evening. Just have them have this stuff ahead of time in your little prep bowls. Just tell them to dump everything in, mix it up, and throw it into, I'll show you one of the pans that you can use. Okay. I'm sure you guys all have one of those cupboards where everything's like falling out and you just shut it <laughs> as fast as you can. Okay, here's one of our cake pans. Oh, looks like it wasn't cleaned properly. Anyways, ignore that. My kids busted down the dishes. So you're <laughs> gonna put your batter in there and you can cook it in the microwave. Those are great to put, um, to cook your birthday cakes and things in as well. You can buy a set of two of them and um, two of your cake mixes. All right, so we've got a can of pineapple chunks. It asks for only half a cup, so I'm gonna measure out whoop, half a cup in here. Perfect. I love that I don't have to dirty more measuring things. And then we're just going to put in our mix. And the recipe, like I said, is right on the back of this. It is gluten-free, so what they recommend with baked goods is to let the batter sit for about 15 to 30 minutes. That will let the um, the grains, the gluten-free ingredients, soften up a bit. And then you can bake them. But I mean, you can bake them anyways. It just might be a little bit grainier taste. If you're not used to gluten-free baking, I would suggest you do that. All right, so we've got all of that in there. Then we're going to add in two cups of carrots. Now, I hate sitting there with a grater and trying to grate carrots. So what I did is I just took a couple chunks of two carrots, cut them into smaller pieces, put them in my um, food processor here, and then I just put it on crush, I think it was, or whatever it was called, and then I'm just going to dump in, I'm going to eye it, that's about two cups there, but hey, you can't go wrong if you have a couple extra vegetables, right? Great way to get your kids to eat vegetables, and it makes them moist with the pineapple. You can also substitute the pineapple for applesauce. And of course, when I was doing the carrots, I just peeled them with our amazing, um, oh, it's the pe Y peeler is what it's called. And it's a really sharp blade. So, and it's got the little eye pieces on it too there. So be careful if kids are using these. I've almost nicked my finger once or twice, um, but it peels so well. You can even peel um, like slices of really thin cheese, like Parmesan for your salads. Okay, we're just gonna make sure all that's incorporated. Perfect. And I think we've got everything. The last time I made one of these videos, I was showing how to make a bunny cake for Easter, which is actually on our website. And I forgot to put the mix in and I had it in the microwave cooking. <laughs> Luckily I caught it quick. <laughs> bloopers. So this we are going to put into our muffin makers. And these are again, quick hack. You can make muffins, mini meatloafs, um, those uh, egg bites. You can make, um, you can take like baby food, put it in the small portions. They're about a quarter cup each. And you can freeze that in the freezer for about an hour or till it's hard. Then pop them out because they're silicone. They're easy to just, whoops, I can't do it with one hand, but they're easy to just pop out and then put them into freezer bags and you've got your food all made up ahead of time. So I remember when I was making baby food, it's such a mess to get everything out. So I'd like to make big batches of it. So anyways, that's a little hack you can use. So these are a quarter cup each. And so I'm going to use my quarter cup um, prep. What is it called? Portion, perfect portion scoop. <laughs> oh geez. All right, so let's see. And I have two of these, they come in a set of two. So um, I think it's gonna make about 12 muffins. It doesn't say exactly on there, I'm pretty sure. And if you're asking about the pineapple, you can't really taste much of it as long as you use crushed pineapple. Last time I only had chunky pineapple and it was a little bit, um, what should I say? You could, you could taste the chunks for sure. 
obviously. And then what I've done is I've made up the most delicious spiced um, icing. And I found the recipe on my website, so I will post that in here for you. And um, it's cream cheese base, cream cheese, butter, cinnamon, uh, what else? icing sugar, and vanilla. And it is so good with the carrot cake because, of course, there's some cinnamon undertones in your carrot cake as well. So these I'm going to put into the microwave. My microwave's obviously normal size and it won't fit two of these in, but I'm going to put one of them in the microwave for how long? Uh, eight muffins. Uh, eight muffins. Eight minutes, and then you let it cool for five minutes. If you do them in the oven, it's at 350 for 35 to 40 minutes. Now, I believe that is the time for doing a full round cake. These are smaller, so I'm maybe going to start at about five minutes and just check them at that point. A lot of things when you cook in a smaller portion takes less time. And I don't want to overcook, especially with any of our steamer um, stuff, you don't want to overcook it. So it's better to start with less time and then add it up. And then this is the amazing cream cheese frosting. Oh, it's so good. If you were making them for Easter, you could put like little coconut, shredded coconut on top, like a little nest, and then some Easter eggs in it. Kind of a cute idea. Or that bunny cake. So there we go. Our chili is just about done. And our muff, uh, sorry, our cornbread has 23 minutes in the oven. So that you could start a few minutes earlier or pre-make earlier in the day. And our muffins are about five minutes more. So really fast, we made three things in that amount of time. Now, what I wanted to do 